I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to show you how I make a homemade baguette. Now by no means am I saying that this is like the French classic authentic baguette because I never been to, uh, to France or Paris, nowhere. But I do know that I like my bread, I love my carbs and I certainly love a good homemade baguette and I think I really enjoy this recipe. Uh, I make this recipe very often if you watch our vlog channel which I'll have a link down below you'll know that I make this very often and it has been wildly requested. So I figured I'd share with you my version. Um, this is how I make it, it comes out perfect every single time so I figured I'd share with you. The ingredients you'll need are few and very basic, starting off with some flour. I'll talk about this in just a minute. You also need some salt. I've got some uh, warm water here with a little bit of sugar in there as well and you'll need some active dry yeast. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yeast and sprinkle it over my water and sugar and just let those sit aside for a few minutes while we talk about the flour. The flour I'm using is Italian double O flour. Uh, you can absolutely use regular all purpose flour, it will be just fine. I just tend to think that this Oven's preheated. I did for another recipe. I like to think that this just gives me a little bit of a better texture to my bread, but regular all purpose flour would work wonderful here. Now, I know that to make baguettes, there are tons of different uh, variations of doing it. You know, uh, some require cold water and rising overnight. Mine isn't like that. Mine doesn't take overnight to do, and it just, once you see the result, I think you'll really appreciate it. You'll get that really delicious, crisp crust on the outside and real chewy inside. It's just perfection on every level. I'm going to make this in my standing mixer just to make life a little bit easier on myself. All I'm going to do is add my dry ingredient to my mixer and wait for my yeast to activate. My yeast is looking good. You can see it's foamed up at the sides and I can really smell it, which is always a good sign. I often get uh, questions about when they make bread recipes or cinnamon buns or whatever and people say, you know, my bread didn't rise or what did I do wrong? Everything came out really hard. Chances are your yeast either it was not activated properly or it expired. So if your yeast doesn't activate, you're not going to get a good bread. So now all I'm going to do is let this mix for a good, I'd say five to six minutes or until the dough kind of comes together and I will show you what it looks like when it's there. Okay, now do not panic because this is a very sticky dough, but it is going to create what I like to think of is a really amazing baguette. So don't worry about it, it'll all be all right. What I have here is an oiled bowl. I just have it oiled with some um, vegetable oil, but you can use anything you want. And then I've got my dough scraper here handy because this is going to help me get my dough out of here really nicely because the spatula is just not... Um, sturdy enough to get my sticky dough out. Don't worry if it looks super sticky, you're going to have to trust me when I tell you it will work. All right, let's get it off of there. I'm just going to take my pastry brush, take the oil from the side and pat it all over the top. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to cover this with some plastic wrap and stick it somewhere warm. I'm going to put mine in my microwave, not turning the microwave on, leave it in there for an hour and a half to two hours. It really depends on the environment it's in. You want it to double up in size pretty well. It'll take between an hour to two hours, so just keep your eye on it. And when it's there, we will move on to the next step. My dough has risen nicely. Now remember, because this is more of a wet dough, it's not going to get all domed like a pizza dough would, so relax. Now, what I have here, this is like a little baguette pan that you put on top of a baking sheet. You do not need this at all. I use it because it makes my baguette look a little bit more like a baguette, like the bottom just looks really nicely. You don't need this. Just use parchment paper on a big baking sheet and you are good to go. So that's, I mean, don't ever think that you need specific things to, for something to come out right. I would never just share a recipe that you would need like to go out and, and find one of these, which by the way, I just buy on Amazon because it's easy. I find everything on Amazon. On my work surface, I'm going to flour this generously with flour because our dough is very sticky. Let me get this out of here. I'm also going to flour my little dough scraper and get this all out of here. Flour the top. And now you're just going to knead this for like two minutes just to pull it together. And you see what I'm doing with my dough scraper? I'm kind of picking up a little flour, 
picking up a little bit of the dough, just making sure nothing is really sticking much. You don't want to add so much flour that you get a really heavy dough. You don't want that. You would just want to add enough flour to make things a little bit easier. Like that's looking pretty perfect for me. You can see it's really supple still. I'm just going to flour right there because that's what I'm going to place it for now. I'm going to take my flour and sprinkle it over my pan. That just gives you a really good look to the baguette. And then just, you can use a scale, but I don't do that. I just use a little bit, a little knife and just cut these into threes as equally as you can manage. So what if one's slightly smaller than the other? I'm not coming over, I'm not gonna know. And then you're just gonna take this, a little bit of extra flour, and you're gonna roll this into a rope. You see that? Those imperfections create the best crust on a baguette in the entire world. So if you're thinking to yourself, that looks so ugly. Uh-uh, uh-uh, that is perfection. Just trust me, honey, don't worry about it. It will work out. So then just do the exact same thing on the other two. You can see this one's gonna be a little bit bigger than the first one, but that's, that's okay with me if it's okay with you. Get them in there nicely. Then I'm gonna take a knife and I'm just gonna make a few slits at the top. Just like that. I usually do about four. I'll do three on that one. Sprinkle a little bit of flour. Like that. And now I'm going to cover these with a, like a lint-free towel. I have a couple here. There you go. And I'm going to place this somewhere warm. Now at this point, I'm just going to place mine on top of my stove just because it helps um, just get things to rise a little bit better. And uh, this doesn't fit in my microwave. That's the real story. Otherwise, I pop it in there, but it doesn't fit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let this rise until it's about doubled in size. I'll show you what it looks like when it's on. In the meantime, this can take anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. In the meantime, take a cast iron skillet, place it at the very bottom, like take your, one of your shelves out of the oven and place it at the very bottom it'll go. Take a cast iron skillet, put the cast iron skillet on top of the rack and get that really nice and hot. Preheat your oven to 475. It'll take a good half hour to preheat, at least mine does. Maybe a little bit less, whatever. So in the time, in that time, while this is rising, preheat your oven with a cast iron skillet. It'll all make sense in a little bit. I promise. That is exactly what you want to see. Now, I have my oven preheated to 475. It needs to be really hot. I've got one of the shelves on the very top. It's the top, you know, as high as it'll go, and one at the very bottom is as low as it'll go. At the very lowest shelf, I have a cast iron skillet preheating in there alongside with the oven for about 30 minutes or so. This took about 35 minutes to rise because I had my oven on, so it definitely helps. I'm gonna pop this into the very top rack. As soon as I'm done doing that, I'm going to then pour a cup of cold water in the cast iron skillet. That's going to create steam, therefore giving you the perfect crispy exterior with really chewy interior that you're looking for when it comes to a baguette. So, in they go. These beautiful babies were in the oven for exactly 30 minutes. Never fails. I love, love, love this recipe. And this is why I use a baguette pan, just because they look more like a baguette, but totally not necessary. Let's just give this a go. It's been cooling for about like 10 minutes. Listen to the crunch. Just listen. Okay. Are you feeling me yet? Do you see? I just want you to come so close, I want you to feel like you're inside the piece of bread. Look at that crust, okay? Look at that lovely interior. I know that I sometimes can be a little bit impatient and dig right in, but I really want you to see how perfect these come out every single time, and they are so easy. Home run. So unbelievably good. I mean, really, mm. Mm. these are incredibly good. They're easy to make, just a few steps, which you, as you can see, there are a few steps involved, but they're very easy, easy steps that really just require a little bit of attention from you and the rest, it just takes care of itself. Go to laurainthekitchen.com to get the written recipe. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.